Marie and her friend. I feel like a woman for the first time in my life. Two girls from the suburbs going to the city to have a good time. Oh, uh, this is my roommate, Sam. Hi, girls. This is my sister, uh, Martha. Uh, Martha, these girls uh, you know, want to buy some grass. Four killers on the loose. Also looking for a good time. And the road leads to nowhere. They meet in the last house on the left. What began as a birthday party ends as a nightmare. I want to give you something. I don't want that. It's worth a lot. I don't want it. I want to be your friend. No, you want to get free. I want to be your friend. Are you all right? Yeah. Hey, I'm fine. I'm fine. <gasps> Just what did happen in the last house on the left? <laughs> Dr. Collingwood lived there. Are you sure we're not going to put you folks in any trouble? No oh, nonsense. Our home is yours. His wife lived there. I've always dreamed of a man who could take me easily. So did their daughter, Marie. They all lived there. Junior. To avoid painting, keep repeating to yourself, it's only a movie, only a movie, only a movie, only a movie, last house on the left. What's up? It's going to be my first movie review. I have a lot more to come on this channel, so stay tuned for more in the future. Uh, tonight it's going to be Last House on the Left, and I chose that because my screen name, uh, Krug Stillo, that's named after the main villain in the movie, played by David Hess, and the movie came out in 1972, hence the 72 at the end of the name, and I just watched it earlier today. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately, so might as well get out of my system, make a video, make a review. Uh, anyway, I wrote some notes. It's my first time, so thoughts are a little disorganized. Um, <laughs> screen saver. Uh, yeah, Last House on the Left was written and directed by Wes Craven. Um, who then went on to do Hills Have Eyes, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, Scream Trilogy, and then produced by Sean S. Cunningham, who went on to direct the first Friday the 13th movie, the Jason franchise, uh, and produced the rest of the Jason franchise. Uh, so they both went on to be uh, pretty successful in their own rights. Uh, it stars David Hess's crew. Um, Fred Lincoln as Weasel, yeah, Weasel. Jeremy Rain as Sadie, Mark Scheffler as Junior, <clears throat> Sandra Castle as Mary, and Lucy Grantham as Phyllis. And it's Wes Craven's directorial debut. And uh, it was pretty controversial for its time uh, due to the content, you know, graphic violence, the subject matter. It's a great revenge movie. Um, and they show, you know, it has rape scenes, murder scenes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it was one of the first movies of its kind to really show on-screen violence like that in such a gory, gruesome way. And um, it was shot documentary style. So with the uh, improvised acting, for the most part, I guess it came off realistic. Um, fairly realistic. I mean, I guess that's debatable for any movie, any fictional movie, but um, I thought the acting, um, I, I thought it, it was realistic enough. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, the movie came out, um, shocked audiences uh, so much that they were outraged and wanted the movie banned and 
a lot of theater projectionists cut the movie, uh, cut the worst scenes out of it because it was just too shocking for people, I guess. And um, it was actually rated X by the MPAA, but they snuck an R rating on it before it came out. So I guess they even broke the law in the process of that movie coming out. And, uh, it was even banned in some countries, I'm not sure which ones, but uh, we had a really sordid history. And in the, process, in the process of all those cuts, the original print of the film, I guess, got lost, and they never really been able to find the whole complete cut of it that was released in theaters. So until now, on the DVD, they say it's um, the most complete cut to date. So even now, the movie's not as complete as it was when it first came out in theaters. And there's even this deleted scene on the DVD. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, deleted scene on the DVD that was <coughs> in the theatrical version um, where the villains are like playing with one of the girls intestines and it's really like it goes on for really long and I guess they're kind of I guess there's dialogue they're talking while they're just playing around in it but there's no sound to that clip so um, <clears throat> because the sound got lost I guess but that's what it said on the DVD so um, yeah I wish they could have had that back in there but there's a little glimpse of it in the in the movie in the feature film uh, it's like like after one of the girls get killed they just show a glimpse of it they're pulling it out and like oh Christ and it cuts to the next scene that I guess was intact so um, yeah uh, really controversial for its time anyway the plot follows uh, two teenage girls Mary and Phyllis who get ambushed by these three escaped convicts on their way downtown to a bloodlust concert it's probably a fake band but um, they want to get some weed on the way to the concert and one of the convicts or I guess one of the convicts son junior he stand outside on the porch looking like a drug dealer and they spot him and go up to him and ask him if he has anything any weed and uh, he says no I don't know I don't know about that stuff and then they turn around and walk away and then he like changes his mind and he's like oh yeah yeah I do have come back he calls him back and then he's like I do have something in my possession uh Colombian for $20 and they're like $20? well if that's too high no 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 we'll take it we'll take it so um I guess that sort of excuses the stupidity of how the girls get into the situation that's about to happen because, you know, they're just thinking about weed. They aren't really thinking like, oh, you know, we probably, probably shouldn't go in there. And I guess back in 1972, I guess people were more naive to that sort of thing. You know, don't buy weed from strangers or something like that. Um, but yeah, when he changed his mind like that, I like. Okay, first of all, let me back up. The movie starts off in a really happy-go-lucky sort of way, like it, the, it's a really happy-go-lucky tone with this, you know, cheerful, upbeat music to it, and the, you know, the dialogue is light-hearted, and the girls they're just kind of walking around the neighborhood, shooting the shit, talking. Um, you know, it, it, it's just re it's just a really happy sort of scene. You know, the music like you wouldn't. It's nothing you nothing you'd expect out of a horror movie, or a, even though it's not really a horror movie per se. But even this kind of movie, you know, rape, revenge, exploitation. Movie.